Hey everyone, I am here with Randy, and he illustrates a very important concept of some people actually do better when they bring in more carbs, more grains, and even, God forbid, gluten into their diet. And this is a, a pretty cathartic maneuver we just made for Randy that was very helpful. And, and so I asked him if he'd be willing to share a story because I know that there are other people who will benefit from hearing this. Um, so, Randy, thanks for taking a moment to talk with us. You're welcome. And, um, you know, there, there's a little bit of backstory. I don't want to give too much of it away. I'd like you to kind of tell people your, your experience, but a couple of the things that I just want to uh, lay the, the foundation with are you came in with some pre-existing gastrointestinal symptoms that, that you were struggling with. Um, uh, but you know, really, what the, the main manifestations were uh, being underweight, fatigued, insomnia, and some rashing and some back pain, and and you were trying to optimize your gut health to improve these things, which makes a lot of sense and, and obviously is something I think is well supported. But when we had our first visit, I had the sense that you were eating too restrictive of a diet, and you actually needed to increase your carb intake, increase your grain intake, and even flirt with some gluten-containing grains and, and see how you would do. And there's one other important uh, piece of context here, which is I, I think some, some improvements needed to be uh, gained with your gut health so that you could tolerate carbs because you were a bit carb intolerant. And this kind of led you to a lower carb diet, which had a little bit of utility, but um, you were kind of stuck in this low carb land and you were becoming fatigued and underweight. And when we helped to improve your gut health, that opened the door for you to be able to eat more carbs. And now after eating more carbs, fairly marked improvement in only a few weeks after upping your carbs, upping your grains, and even having some gluten. Uh, so that's you know, the, the relevant context I wanted to lay. But you know, please, please tell us a little bit about your experience and what you've noticed. Yeah, so like you said, for the past um, three or four years, I've been on a paleo diet, uh, very low carb. Uh, for the past year or so, I've been pretty much in the ketogenic zone, uh, 50 to 20 carbs per day. Uh, within the past just five weeks, I've tried you know, increasing my carb intake by adding in things like potatoes, rice, spelt, oatmeal, and uh, wheat. And the benefits I've seen is I went from having no energy at all, from having di difficulty walking up a flight of stairs on days, to you know, now having you know, greatly improved energy, um, strength has greatly improved, I picked up 10 pounds, which is the first time in the past five or six years I've seen the scale move in the right direction for me. And uh, the rash almost completely improved. The chills I was having completely diminished. Um, so I've, I've seen a lot of success with just changing my carbohydrate intake. And you were saying also that your wife is happy because you have more energy and, and you also are able to power wash the deck, which is, you know, from being barely able to walk upstairs, to now being able to power wash a deck in only three to four weeks time is, is pretty remarkable. Right. She's, she's happy with my newfound health also. I've stained the back deck, pressure washed the house, and most importantly, I can play with my eight-year-old son now. I can almost keep up with him. Yeah, yeah. Never, never probably fully be able to keep up, but we'll try, right? <laughs> um, right. So I mean, that, that, that's fantastic. I, I'm, of course, elated to hear that you're feeling better. And I, I really wanted to capture this because in light of the recent video that we published about the prevalence of non-celiac gluten sensitivity, wherein we, we showcased how, yes, it is a legitimate condition, but the prevalence is, is probably lower than most people have been led to believe, likely somewhere between 0.6 to roughly 6% of the U.S. population. Some people had a hard time with that and, and uh, wanted to 
you know, counter me with reasons why no one should ever have any gluten. And it, it's interesting that I'm in this position of having to defend eating gluten, where I'm actually a proponent of everyone at least trying a gluten-free diet. But the other aspect of this conversation that I think eludes some people is cases just like your own, Randy, where people were, were clearly making themselves ill because their metabolism needed more of a carb intake. Now, is it the gluten that's helping you? No, and it's, it's the carb intake. But one of the things that will make your carb intake easier is allowing you to have some gluten. And uh, certainly, um, I'm guessing at, at certain social functions or if you're on the go, you can't always procure a gluten-free carb source. And so it's nice to have the leeway to be able to eat some gluten. Uh, and so I think at, at very least, just understanding that some people can eat grains and gluten and actually become healthier in the process. And, and Randy is just a shining example of that. Randy, as we kind of wrap this thought up here, are, are there any other observations or, or, or items that you'd like to leave people with? Oh, I can um, definitely contest that it's um, that you know I'm one of those that avoided gluten for years, and you know, after adding it back in, you know, one of the positive aspects is I can now you know eat at restaurants along with my family and friends, and have that improved social aspect in my life also. Absolutely, absolutely, and and again. Uh, to, to be clear for people, if you have eliminated gluten and then reintroduced it, and you've clearly subjectively identified that you have a problem with it, then I would recommend, and I think anyone reasonably would, would agree, to avoid gluten to the level of your intolerance. Um, but that oftentimes is left out. I mean, we cite just the evidence showing that gluten is bad, and then we conflate that to the whole population. Uh, in, in your case, Randy, we didn't have to do mitochondrial testing, adrenal testing, hormone testing, any of that. All we needed to do was identify one of the pillars of health, which is your diet, optimize for that. And now you're almost keeping up with your eight-year-old, you're, you're power washing the deck, the missus is happy, so happy wife, happy life, and everything seems to be moving in a good direction. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you again, for, again, Randy, for taking the time. I think this video will, will hopefully help a lot of people. Congratulations on feeling so much better. And uh, again, just, just thank you for, for the openness to, to share this with people. Thank you, Dr. Ruscio. My pleasure.